what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we're doing a recap from the uh, Amazon Prime pay-per-view that Tank Davis, Frank Martin, and David Benavidez, Alexander Votsik headlined a uh, pay-per-view that took place last Saturday, um, June 15th. Now, before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So hey guys, I want to apologize for not um, really being up on this too much uh, this past week, not getting this one out earlier. I've uh, just been really hectic at work and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this is a, you know, a little bit more of, a, of an extended video. So I uh, kind of just wanted to make sure, um, you know, I had time and focus enough to get it done. So we're going to start with the, with the preliminary fights that actually took place for free on Amazon um, and we, we kick it off with the Mark Maxayo and um, God is his name Eduardo Hernandez I think um, you know Maxayo looked good knocked him down a couple times he looked strong at 130 he's carried his power up and he's ready to go he took a one-sided 10 round decision um, to remain unbeaten uh, at 130 pounds and I'm really looking forward to seeing what Maxayo can do next um, because he is a powerful fighter, although 130 is a little lacking in terms of uh, talent. But again, now we don't know what the hell could happen with the um, Turkey Al Sheik with all the fights that he's making. So we'll see uh, what comes out of that. Then Elijah Garcia in the main event of that preliminary, that prelim card, um, take, take, took on his toughest test to date. Uh, former. Um, you know, uh, well, contender, Kyron Davis. And remember, Davis, uh, a couple years back, um, fought Anthony Durrell to a draw and then also fought um, a tough fight against uh, David Benavidez. Um, even though he got stopped in that fight, he took the fight on short notice. But remember, Kyron Davis had made his bones at, one, at 160 before that. I think he kind of moved up showed everybody what he can do and now back down at at 160 he's got a chance to really flourish and man what a performance out of him just completely outboxing and outworking elijah garcia uh who is a you know 20 year old fighter on the rise but a good strong victory for kyron davis a deserving win and now he's put himself into the top 10 at middleweight and i'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in a wide open division so a good strong performance he's likely getting a what's next video now following that win oh and maxio will get one as well but now let's take a look at the main card we start with the uh the one that kicked off the pay-per-view card which was the um i believe it was the carlos adames terrell gauche fight and you know i people were not that impressed some people thought uh gauche might have you know that the fight was closer and it was it was closer than the cards read um you know i'm fine with adamas winning the fight i didn't think it was as wide as the judges had it scored i probably for me i think 115 113 is fair um but if you were underwhelmed by carlos adamas's performance get used to it because carlos adamas to me has never been super impressive. Yeah, he was an undefeated fighter on the rise, fighting with top rank. And then he stepped up against Patrick Teixeira in an underwhelming performance where he lost a close decision in that one. First loss. Moves up to one, you know, he, he takes a couple years off. That had to do with COVID as well. He comes back, he takes on Sergey Derevinchenko. Underwhelming decision victory and a very close win over Derevinchenko. Then, um... Then against, what, Julian J-Rock Williams last year, who, I mean, most people would agree, J-Rock was kind of a one-hit wonder. And um, underwhelming performance. He ended up stopping J-Rock. I don't know if he would have legitimately stopped them overall. It was a premature stoppage, but I think he probably still ends up stopping J-Rock. But J-Rock was in that fight the whole way. It was a good action-packed fight last year. And, you know, Adamas underwhelming to me it wasn't a great performance and then he turns the same kind of performance in against Gauche who let's be let's be fair and honest Gauchet's 
Shea is kind of built to make you look bad. Um, he did it against Arizlandi Lara. Lara did not, you know, Lara cleanly outboxed him, got a decision win, but it wasn't, it, it was an underwhelming type victory. Same thing happened against Tim Zhu a couple years ago. He actually knocked Tim Zhu down, and then Tim Zhu uh, just kind of grinded out a workmanlike decision win over him. Um, and you see the same thing out of Carlos Adamas. Very underwhelming. Now, Adamas is a top 10 guy. Gauche, this probably is, uh, I don't know if this is his swan song because he actually fought well. So Gauche probably guaranteed himself another crack at some. He might even bust into my top 10. I got to... I got to look at the middleweight top 10 and see, but, um, you know, Gauche put up a better performance than people expected, but I did say, don't be surprised if an upset were to happen, and it was close enough to call either way. Adamas gets out of there with a win. Um, we'll talk about what he, he could possibly be doing next, next week when I do my what's next video on him. Um, then the next fight on the card was the Gary Antoine Russell versus Alberto Puello fight. I told people don't sleep on Puello, and Puello outworked Russell. Russell just comes straight forward, and, and Puello knows how to hit from the angles. And I think that was the difference, especially down the stretches. Russell kind of leads in, um, looking for a big shot, uh, kind of one, one punch at a time type stuff. Um, but he was doing well in the first half of the fight. He was doing okay. And then Puello, second half of the fight, Puello's just, uh, you know, just grinded it and grinded it. And I thought he outworked Gary Antoine Russell. He landed some good shots, outworked them. And I feel he was the deserving winner in a close fight as Puello becomes the WBC interim champion with that win, which was major because Puello could be upgraded to champion shortly if Devin Haney decides... He wants to give up the belt because he's not happy with the purse bid that he got for the Sandor Martin mandatory fight. So, I mean, a lot of moving pieces, but Alberto Puello, following his victory of becoming WBA champion uh, less than two years ago, and then a positive drug test that got him stripped of the title last year, um, has bounced back in a major way, beating probably the undefeated boogeyman of the division. Gary Antoine Russell. Not a lot of people wanted to fight Gary Antoine. And I think a lot of people were expecting Gary Antoine to, to roll over Puello and and continue to be that scary figure. But in the year of the upset, it's been happening over and over. And Alberto Puello put up a fantastic performance and is now your WBC interim champion. I'll be doing a what's next video on both of these guys next week. The co-feature, David Benavidez versus Alexander Votsik. Um, You know, I, another fight that I told people not to sleep on fucking Votsik. And Votsik gave Benavidez, outside of his first, um, outside of Benavidez's first fight with, uh, what's it, was the guy's name Richard Abril? When he won the WBC Super Middleweight title the first time, when he was like 20. Outside of that first fight with him, um, or uh, Gavriel, something like that, outside of that fight, this was Benavidez's toughest test. Benavidez, in my opinion, was the deserving winner. I think uh, seven to five, eight to four in that area. He, the speed advantage was huge. Benavidez looked like he rocked Votzik a couple times early. Uh, in the first half, he was definitely winning the fight and in control of that fight, no doubt. He started to lose rounds in the second half of the fight because he got tired. I think the weight of 175, having to carry that extra weight, but more importantly, um, two factors that stuck out to me why Benavidez did not completely dominate Alexander Votzik. The first factor is the fact that Benavidez is not used to hitting guys that can take his shots. And although Votzik, in my opinion, got rocked multiple times, um, it was never that one punch power that was gonna put him down, you know? And also part of the reason Benavidez ran out of gas was he's not used to getting hit by a guy that can take his shots, getting return fire. And even though Votzik was landing one at a time, he started to land more in the second half and even those one one at a time punches 
were effective. And Votic was in great shape. You saw that. He just was 36 against a very good David Benavides. And Benavides is fast as shit. As I said, the speed advantage was the key here. I mean, David, it wasn't the power. David, yeah, David hurt him a couple times. And David even felt Votic's power a couple times. But for me, the key was the speed. Speed, speed, speed. He was so much faster than Votic. His hand speed was fantastic. But David, again, that was his first test at 175. So you don't want to overly judge him, right? And criticize. But if David is, is not vastly better, and he runs into the winner of Baval and Better Viev, I'm sorry, I think Better Viev stops David if it's that David in the ring you know and um, and I also think Bival masterfully master, mas, <laughs> masterfully outclasses David Benavidez if it's the same David Benavidez that we saw last Saturday night we'll see though you know because he is in line now he's a WBC interim champ at light heavyweight he's a WBC interim champ at super middleweight um, is this the kind of performance that gets Canelo to say okay? You know, it might be because let's flash back to a to um, a fighter, Canelo Alvarez. The last time people said he was afraid of fighting somebody was Triple G Gennady Golovkin. Triple G could not get the the Canelo fight for a couple years there. When did Canelo finally fight him? when Triple G looked human after when he fought Daniel Jacobs. Daniel Jacobs, who was a very good fighter, at the time, most people felt Triple G was going to roll over Jacobs. And Jacobs, who again, uh, you know, not to compare notes, but Jacobs purposely gave up, or purposely um, did not make weight the rehydration clause at the IBF snap down he did not uh, be, he was not a part of that for the fight with Triple G, uh, the unification bout there. And um, he came in an extra, on the night of the fight, he looked like a fucking cruiserweight. I mean, the dude was huge. He looked like he was like 185 the night of the fight against Triple G, but doesn't matter. Triple G did not look like the destructive Triple G. So Canelo fought him afterwards. That was the, he fought him right after that. That was, his next fight was against Canelo. Maybe Canelo will do the same against Benavidez. Benavidez looked human the other night. You know, he did not look like the dominant David Benavidez. And that's why I kept telling people to not fucking count out Votzik. Votzik is a very good fighter. Now, David beat him. I have no argument there. David beat him. But it was not an easy win. And... You know, if David's truly great, he can beat other great fighters. That's the truth. And he will going forward. But it's not going to be easy because David, there are truly gifted fighters in and around that division. And David is going to have to step up his game and everything against those fighters. So, you know, um, doing, I'm going to do a what's next on both fighters because votes it. Let's not. Let's not, uh, you know, forget the fact that he he returned last year from a three-year retirement and took on guys that aren't even close to Benavidez's level and got three victories. But, again, all three guys not even close to Benavidez's level. So let's not forget that, okay? Um, and now, finally, we're going to uh, look at the main event, Tank Davis versus Frank Martin. Um very good performance by both men, you know? Frank Martin was cleanly outboxing Tank Davis the majority of the fight. Heading into that eighth round, I had him up five to two. I thought he was cleanly winning the fight. He was outboxing Tank Davis, no doubt. But Tank, that confidence um, that I'm eventually going to land and, it, and it's going to be it's gonna be good night, I mean, that reign true in this fight, you know, and Tanks, again, I think his his best gift is not his power, 
it's his ability to set up his power. His timing on his punches, on his shots that he lands are fucking destructive. They really are. His timing is fantastic on those. Now, yes, we, we will criticize his opponent selection, how he's been protected. Absolutely. That's deserving. No, no doubt about that. The way he put the two weight clauses on Ryan Garcia. Total bullshit. But, you know, you look at Frank Martin. He was a top 10 lightweight coming into the year for me. Absolutely. Um, uh, a good, solid fighter that I said going into the fight, if Martin can, can outbox Tank for 12 rounds, he can win the fight. If it goes to scorecards, Frank Martin can win this fight. But he's got to stay away from Tank's power the entire fight, which is tough, obviously. Um, so, you know, it, it rang true. And Tank, as we expected, you know, ends up catching Frank Martin eventually. So obviously Tank showed me in this fight, like full on showed me, that he doesn't give a shit about winning rounds because he believes he's going to catch you eventually. So that's clear and that's fine. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what Tank does next, especially if it's Lomachenko and the unification. But we will discuss that on his What's Next video. Frank Martin is going to get a What's Next video because this performance, in my opinion, warrants him a top 10 spot still. So, good performance out of him, good performance out of Tank. There is a lot to talk about on this pay-per-view card. I think it's vastly underrated based on what they're saying the projected pay-per-view numbers are. I thought there was a lot of story uh, in all these fights and a lot of uh, backdrop. And um, I really hope um, you enjoyed this video. This was the Tank Davis, Frank Martin, David Benavidez, Alexander Votzik, Amazon pay-per-view recap. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.